Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, we are going to compare and use direct cut and scan to cut data. The stamp set we'll be using is from this month's Paper, Pun Paper Pumpkin Kit by Stampin' Up. It's the stamp set that came with this kit called Joy to the World. Okay, so this is gonna be a really fun video because you are going to, if you stick around to the end, get to see over 30, about 35 projects I created with this kit. Many of them with the help of my Scan and Cut, but some I just created with the kit. So we are gonna get to see the different projects if you stick around. So what I wanna do is explain kind of how I got to this point. So there's a stamp that came with the kit and it's a really beautiful wreath. And I thought, wow, this would be great to cut out with little ragged edges. So that's what we're gonna do, that's direct cut. And then there's this other wreath. This is another wreath that came in the kit. This, is a, this was sort of pre-printed. Here, let me just show you that. I'm trying to give you the big picture. There was this one and I said, oh, wouldn't it be nice to have a load of these? And then I can do all kinds of stamping to them. So hence, I got the idea to create a bunch of these wreaths. I, I did it with a different color than white because I already had a bunch of white ones in there. And then, I can, and then I was able to create this kind of effect with lots of different, stamping lots of different wreaths on the rings and to get the inside out, okay? Which you can't do with direct cut and you're gonna find out why, or you're gonna find out that you can't. So I, that's how I came up with this idea. I said, oh, I'm just gonna show my crafty friends and I'm gonna try this myself and you know, show you how I got to this point. So the direct cut, and then I'm gonna you know, do comparisons along the way. What is direct cut? Direct cut is when you, I'm just gonna stamp in just jade, by the way, the wreath is just jade. Direct cut is when you directly cut from your machine. Don't worry that your stamps get stained. Of course, every time I use cherry cobbler on my stamps, they get stained. Okay, so direct cut is when you directly cut something right out of your machine. It, you can't save it, you can't enlarge it, you can't do anything to it. I'm just, you know what I do when I stamp is I always stamp on my mat first just to make sure that I have good coverage, which not yet. It takes a couple tries sometimes. Also, I need to put my sponge down. So direct cut is when you can't do anything with it. You can just cut it out. But you can do things like put an outline around it, and which we're going to do a little outline. So there's things you can do with it. It's just that not, you can't do what you can with scan to cut data. Scan to cut data, you can save it. You can make multiples of it. You can enlarge it. You can cut the inside and outside out, but it's very, very temperamental and tricky and direct cut is a lot faster and I prefer using direct cut whenever I can. But when in this case, I wanted to get the inside of these out. This is almost impossible to do with scissors. So I was just like, I'm gonna just make a bunch of those wreaths. And that's how, kind of how I came up with it. Now you could also cut this one out as well and with the scan to cut data. But I liked using direct cut for this one, direct cut because I didn't want the inside out because I wanted to put the joy to the world on my wreath. So you might be saying, that doesn't really look like yours. Don't you have some other color in there? And I do, I have this other color in there, but I'm not gonna stamp on this color, with this color yet because it really doesn't matter where I put this soft sea foam over the top of the Just Jade. I can put it any place because it's lighter. And if I, if I were to put it on now, I mean, if I were to, stamp it on now it might mess up where the actual image gets scanned so you need you need a good clear scan to start with okay so that's important you know for your for when you're going to use your scan and cut because because of contrast you have to have a good contrast so what i'm going to do is just make a little room for my machine tilt my camera i just wanted you to see the stamping process so you're not like, what is going on? And there's a mystery here. I don't want there to ever be a mystery as how I got to where, to where we got. And you're gonna be able to do the, you're gonna be able to follow along with whichever stamps you have right now. Put this wherever you want on the mat. Doesn't matter where you put it. I think it's stickier on that side, but it's just up to you where you put it. So what I'm showing you right now, just because I'm using the STX 125 does not mean that you can't use that you have to use this model. What I'm showing you right now, this first part of this tutorial can be done with absolutely any, any model of scan and cut that you have. It doesn't matter, they all have this feature. I know because I have an ancient one and it has this feature. So you're going to, you're going to use direct cut. So we're gonna turn on your machine, you see pattern and scan, we're going to scan. 
Any of you can follow along with whichever model. Go to direct cut. Direct cut is because I'm directly cutting these out. I'm not saving them. Go to your machine. This is a temporary storage area. And I'm gonna use 12 by six because I only have items on the top of my mat, but if you wanna change your cutting area, you can scan the whole mat in. CM models don't have that option. My CM model doesn't have this option. Okay, even though you have a black and white recognition and color recognition mode, always for 99% of the time use black and white recognition mode, or at least always start there. Because if you start there and it doesn't work, then you can change to color. There's no reason to change to color if your black and white one works because you have good contrast. Okay, so now we are going to scan in the, the, the two wreaths, and I only, I'm just doing two because, why not? Because I want to cut out two I, in case one doesn't recognize. Maybe there's a little dirty spot on the, on the scanning plate or something. So I always like to at least try two, but I only really needed one. We're going to say okay, and the first thing is to say okay. That's the scan. And then it did a really good job, and you might be going, wow, your mat's dirty. Yes, my mat is dirty, but that's okay. I just keep washing it. So because my mats are dirty and I don't want all the extra little bits recognized, one thing I can do to help out the machine is to make a selection and zoom in with the selection, or actually you just take your selection and make it smaller, closer to the area. But I don't want to get too close to the edge. The other way to get rid of the extra bits from my dirty mat or to say ignore object size. We know that the wreath is at least a couple inches wide, so I'm safe to say if I ignore things that size, one point, like one and three quarter inch or 1.75 or 7.3 in this case, then it will get rid of all those, a lot of the dirty bits. And if still, if it doesn't after that, and I say okay, I can also edit out any extra bits, any extra stray parts by editing them and putting them in the trash. Now I'm gonna put an outline distance around this because you never really wanna cut along the line if you can help it. Because cutting along the line, it's, unless your machine is perfectly aligned, it'll come out kind of raggedy. I want them to have a little bit of an outline distance, like the sample I showed you. That just puts a little bit of white around the edges, which is what I want. Okay, a little bit of white. If you wanna be daring and cut along the line, just don't put an outline distance. You don't have to put one, it's just my preference. Okay, okay, you keep saying okay. However many times you have to say okay until you get to the point where it says, do you wanna cut, draw, emboss, etc." Just select cut, because we wanna cut it out. If you're using a CM model, you set your blade depth. If you're using Whisper White cardstock like I am, set your blade depth to four. However, I'm using Auto Blade technology. This is an SDX machine. I don't have to set the blade depth. Boy, is my blade holder dirty. I don't have to set the blade depth. So I'm gonna go with blade depth of, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, if you're using a CM, blade depth of four, otherwise, nope, just auto blade. And it says two minutes, that's because it's gonna be longer than a minute, but less than two. See, it just changed to one, because it just goes in one, increment, one minute increments. I'm gonna go ahead and wait for that and not try to edit this video, if I can, because, oops, and it's already moved. Okay quick cutting so that's okay what this is the whole reason you never color before you cut look what happened see that but I am the paper chef and I'm gonna roll with it so what we're gonna do is just scan it in again and I'm just gonna go ahead and chop that off see I don't need to worry if I would have if I were to color in images and that happened I'm going to put on some painter's tape too, but scan, direct cut, da, 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 da. I'm just going for it. We're just doing it again. And I can use some painter's tape to hold that, hold that image down. Hold, even though I just restuck my mat, doesn't matter. It's still not that sticky because I've been using it. Even when I say just did it a few days ago, I've already used it probably 20 times since then, so, or maybe longer, maybe more. So. I'm just going to make sure this one doesn't slip, but that's why I did stamp twice. So again, da, da, da. we're going to put that ignore object size. Okay, I'm just going faster this time because I already taught you how to get to this point. All I was trying to do is get to the cut point. Outline distance. That for, that's when all that little mess up part is forgiving. When you use the outline distance, those little 
it gets less jaggedy, the edges. The reason it was so jaggedy was because all of these little points were recognized and it got all the way inside there and it got inside there. But when you put that outline distance, it goes around and it's very nice, very nice for this wreath. Okay, this time it's not slipping. You should see how much painter's tape I have on here. Do not slip. This is my... I don't want to have to redo this video. <laughs> okay, it looks like it's cutting out fine this time. Look at that. I'm happy with that. Okay. So now, we'll, we'll get to the part about where we... Well, we do this with this in a little while. But you see how much painter's tape I put on there so it wouldn't slip? And you can even hear how sticky it is. Listen. Hear how sticky? It still slipped, even after how sticky that mat is. So I end up using a lot of painter's tape, but don't get that caught up in your machine. All right, so there you go. And it's perfect. And I'll show you how I got to, from this to this after I change my camera angle again. But now I want to show you scan to cut data. Okay, so that was called direct cut. And um, actually, no, I want to show you one more thing. I'm not going to actually do this. I'm just going to show you how to do something. I'm going to show you how to do something. So if you want to, if you want to go backwards and ex and add your outline distance of 0 0.08, and then put some foil in or something, put some other material down on your mat, you can actually get a really nice effect. Another layer on this one. Okay, you can get another layer around the edges. Okay, so that's just another little trick, but I'm not doing that right now because I've done that countless times in my tutorials. And I want to get to the point of the video, which was the difference between direct cut and scan to cut data. Okay, so I will show you examples of how I put foil around the edge of this, although you just learned how to do that. So we're going to go to scan and now I'm going to do a comparison. So direct cut, all you can do is directly cut. That's it, N nothing else. Okay, I get asked this all the time. Well, I want to make more than one. It's not letting me. It will never let you. You can't. If you're using direct cut, you can only make one or whatever you scanned in. If you scanned in 25 of these little stamped images, you can cut them all out. If you scanned in one, you can only cut one out. It's directly cutting. There's no data storage whatsoever. Even though you keep seeing me try to where I'm temporarily storing, it doesn't mean anything. It's not really stored. You are not able to do anything with this except cut it directly out put an outline around it, a bigger outline, a bigger outline. That is it. That is all. It's impossible to do anything else. Please stop frustrating yourself and trying to make copies in this mode. You can't make copies in direct cut. Okay. So I get asked this all the time, as you can tell. So this is why I'm doing another video. So how can you make copies? How can you make copies of something? Let's go. You can only do it with scan to cut data. You need data. So here's what I'm doing. I took the paper, I'm going to use this one because it's a nice clean image. Okay, I'm gonna, it, it's a clean image, it's a nice, it's a good contrast, so I'm, I'm going to use this as an example. You don't have to use this as an example, I could use this as an example. But this got very, very sloppy and messy be, unless you put a pencil mark around the inside of this. Because it's it just went a little, it was messy. And I don't want to be messy, I want to show you this, I'm trying to teach you something, so I'm going to use this clean one this wreath. We're going to make many of the wreath. That's what we're going to do. We scan to cut data. I'm putting this on the mat and I'm just going to put it on the top and I'm scan to cut data. I'm going to scan it in. Okay. It says the, the scanner lever should be set to two. Okay. I don't know why it needs. Oh, it thinks I have thick paper. Okay. I'm going to just go ahead and set it back to one. I don't really have thick paper. That's not thick at all, but if it makes me go to two, okay. It's making me go to two. That's fine. I'm going to go with two. If it tells you to go to scanner lever position two, just do what it says, even though my paper is not thick. It thinks my paper is thick. I'm glad you're getting to see this, that I don't have a smooth time when I use my scan and cut any more than you do, but you have to not let it get the best of you. You just have to just keep rolling with it because, you know, things happen. All right, so what is scan to cut data? Scan to cut data is taking... The, the shape that I'm scanning in, and it could be a scanned image, it could be pattern paper, it could be me writing my signature with a Sharpie marker on a piece of paper. It doesn't matter. It's taking whatever's on the mat and turning it into a cutting file or a line. It's going to select the lines for me. 
Okay, so how does it do it? it? You can either select the outside, the outside lines, okay? See how it selected one giant box? Well, that doesn't really help me. And it's, it also selected the outside line here. I'm sorry, it selected the inside. It looks like a donut. Well, that doesn't help me because look, that's not, that's not what I want. Because I could I could have just done, if that was going to do that, I could have just used direct cut. So if you ever just want the outside of something, don't ever use scan to cut data. It's a waste of time. Just use direct cut. But now the second option is what you want. The second option says select the inside, right, and outside lines. So look at that. I got the inside of my little donut and the outside lines and all these other things. It got all this other stuff too, inside and outside. Let's just zoom in. Now, if you want every single line, every which way, then that's this last one. But I don't like that one. I like the second option for inside and outside lines. It's the cleanest way to do it. So this is outside lines only, inside and outside, all lines. These are your three options for scan to cut data. Let's preview it and see what we have. And I did my selection to only, you know, not get the dirty part of the mat. So let's say, okay, um, it's asking where I want to store it, okay? So this time it does matter where you store it because you want to store it on your machine if you want to sit here and cut it right now. So let's say our machine, then we can actually see it. If I were to say st save it over to Canvas Workspace, then you're going to be in another whole can of worms because you might say, well, where is it at over there? And now I got to go to my laptop and get the file, yada, yada, yada. You don't want to store it on, so that's it, we're done. Believe it or not, we, that was it. We can't really actually see it from in here unless we, yeah, we can't really see it right now. We have to, we have to go to another place. So if it's okay to delete all patterns. So if you save it to your Canvas workspace, you're going to have to log in and go and, and, you know, and retrieve it. It's easy to retrieve, but what I'm saying is if you want to get it right now, instant gratification like I do because I'm making a video, is I want to save it to my machine. Always save it to your machine. I have 158 files, as you can see, and I'm still not out of room. So don't worry. Well, it's actually not that many because I keep deleting files and making more space. All right, so where is this data? Go to retrieve data. And remember, we just saved it to our machine. We could have saved it to Canvas. We could have saved it to the USB stick. If you really don't have any room, save it there. You could have saved it to your laptop via cable, with a cable, but no, ours is on the machine because that's where we just saved it. It's at the end. So you could go one, two, three, you could keep going down, right, one, all the pages, or you could just jump to the end. And there it is. See it is, there it is. You jump to the last file. And is that awesome? Look at that. Look at that. We can't do that with direct cut. You zoom, I'm zooming, now see? You can't do that with direct cut. You know what else you can't do with direct cut? You, you can't move things, okay? You can't move things with direct cut. I have to say, okay, I have to be in edit mode, okay? I don't wanna move this yet because I need to group it, but I'm saying you, now I can move it and do other things and, re, and resize it, which I don't wanna do, and I can duplicate it. But let's first group it because if not, we're gonna have a big old mess. Use the selection tool and just select everything, which is just these two things, and group them, okay? Object edit, and there's the little group. It has the little circle and triangle together. Whew, whew. The reason I say whew is, if you've taken my courses, oh, by the way, I should have mentioned that at the beginning. I do have a new course. I'll mention it at the end. But um, in my courses, I always say, group everything, group everything, group everything. <laughs> because I otherwise, I would have moved the little donut hole, and then out goes the other part, or the little hole from the wreath, and then they need to be connected. So now it really doesn't matter, right? I'm not cutting this out. If I, if I wanted to use scan to cut data and cut this out directly, I would have left my paper on the mat and I, I wouldn't have moved it around, obviously, right? I would have left it where it was at and tried to cut it out. But the prop, I'm not doing that right now. That's not what this tutorial is about. This tutorial is about making a lot of these. The, uh, the true benefit, I wanna show you the true benefit of using scan to cut data. And if I were to just cut this out directly, yeah, it, was, it would be a sort of a benefit because I would have got the hole cut out, but it really wouldn't have given me much uh, in terms of uh, efficiency, okay? So now that I have it grouped, I can do a lot of things to it, but let's, let's just look at the size of it. It's 2.5 high, okay? I want to make sure I go back to that. Okay, I'm going to um, enlarge it just to show you we can do that, see? So in scan to cut data, you can enlarge your data. Is that cool? I do this all the time for Craft Club because little kids can't work with small objects and I have to make big things for them.
Okay, what did I say? I'm going to turn it, change it back to um, 2.5, right? 2.5. And if you hold your if you hold your stylus there, it, it goes faster than me trying to go beep 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 beep. Okay, 2.5, 2.5. All right, so now the magic, where's the magic? Is the magic is making a lot of these. That's where the magic happens. So I already know by, by trial and error, or I mean not trial and error because I've just did this already. I'm using soft sea foam. I know I can get 16 of these on a mat. Okay, 16 of them. I'm not gonna cut out 16 because I don't want you to wait for 16, but I need to show you how to get 16 on your mat. So let's go to here. Let's just. We're back to the original size, right? Doesn't matter where we put this. Doesn't matter for this exercise. We're gonna say, go to the plus, and we want 16. Zoop, 16 will fit on there. So you're like, oh, now I gotta sit and do this and this and this. No, you don't. No, you don't have to do this and this and this. You don't have to move these around. Let the scan and cut do the work for you. And in fact, if you, like working off your machine like I do, this is one of the greatest benefits of using the machine as opposed to Canvas Workspace, is to is this, this feature called the auto layout. I love auto layout. It's something built into the machine. So you just keep saying okay, okay, right, until you get to this stage, right? Till you get to this, you keep saying okay till you get to the screen with these little shapes going in all different directions. Auto layout, this is, it has a few options. Go to the auto layout and it lets you arrange them any which way, this, this turns them all different directions and the most efficient way, I like the first option. The second option is only gonna make them all go face up and face down, they're the two options. So like if you had here, like, like uh, this shape that mattered if it was upside down, if you use this layout option, it would make them all go this way or it would make them all go this way, okay? Up and down. The third option is it makes them all go this way, right side up. Does it matter? No, we're using a wreath, right? It doesn't matter. So we're gonna use the first option, which is auto layout them all. Is that amazing or what? Okay, so let's stick the cardstock on here just so I can tell you the settings and so you can actually see this happen and you believe me. I'm not actually gonna cut out all 16, we'll stop it. But we're gonna say okay, okay. And we're gonna cut. Okay, we could cut all 16. It would take us five minutes, but we're not gonna cut all 16. We're gonna cut one and we're gonna cancel it. If you're using a CM350 right now, you would use a blade depth of five. Okay, five. I'm using an auto blade, right? So I don't need to change my blade depth. So, but what it just did is a little test to see how deep it needed to go. I'm gonna make sure I get one good wreath. And by the way, this is soft sea foam cardstock. I just thought that looks better. Okay, oops, stop. I don't want the second one. I'm gonna quit cutting. So. It's telling me that the carriage is going to move away. So before we, before we get to the point of me showing you how to color these and what I do with these wreaths, I need to get you to the point of this. You've done, you're done cutting and you're like, oh, well, that was a lot of work. You know, it was been easier to cut out the inside. No, it was a lot of work, but this is the best part is with scan to cut data, you can save your work. See, when I save, it's asking me, where do I want to save this? The machine. Canvas workspace or the USB? Of course the machine. It says it includes a group pattern. You can't ungroup it once you save it. That's okay, I don't want to ungroup it. I want this little circle to stay with, the, I want the inside circle to stay with the outside circle, so it's okay. And now, how great is this? Do you want to overwrite the file or do I want to keep my original file and make a new file? Well, why not just overwrite the file? Because every time I'm making Reese from now on, I'm gonna be making a whole page of these. So we're gonna overwrite the file. Okay, and then it, I, do, I do actually need to delete some data. So we'll just delete something else. We'll delete the old one I was playing around with here. It is asking me, it's telling me that um, in order to save it, I needed to delete something. I'm always deleting something. Okay, but you probably won't have that problem because like you see, I have 159, what's it gonna say? 158 files. So that's how many you can get before it starts telling you you need to delete. All right, let's go home and go Whoa, what happened to that file, right? What happened to it is it's always there. When you go to retrieve your data, you just retrieve your data and there's the file at the end. See, there it is. And there's other things I was doing. There's one I did earlier the other day. Hey, I can delete that one. 
delete. Okay, anyway, there's more things you can do in scan to cut data than you can in direct cut. And some of those things are, um, let's go down here too. Just wanna show you one thing you can do with the SDX, but not the, not the CM. Okay, let me take this little guy and put him off to the side so you know which one I'm working with. Okay, I'm gonna go to edit, put this little guy off to the side. Now watch, this is something you can only do with the SDX, but you can't, you can do everything I showed you up until this point as of 25 minutes into the video, okay? If you're watching this on a TV or later, make yourself a note. I have the CM350, if you're saying to yourself, the scan and cut two, can I do all this? The answer is yes, up until everything I just showed you, every single thing you can do with any model of scan and cut. But now what I'm about to show you is only something you can do with the SDX models. You can do this, go to object edit, and go to the layering. You can do the layering right inside the scan to cut data. How cool is this? It, but it makes a separate layer. You have to move it away. Look how cool that is. And it's offsetting. It's not just making an offset for the outside line. It's making it for the inside line. Let me move my little donut and show you. I'm so excited. All right. See how it, see, look at that. So you can actually, you can create outlines. This is the outline, the, the offsets using scan to cut data. You can only do that in direct cut you can only do the outset like when you direct cut you could have made an offset as well i showed you that i showed you how to remember i said you could change it up put some foil in there put some foil make your little offset you could do that with direct cut but you can't save it but this time you can save it make the offset and you get an offset for the outside and inside lines which is just brilliant i love i love that i'm going to get rid of that one i don't need it so just i'm just going to go trash it see little trash can but I just wanted to show you that one little feature. When I saw that, I was like, oh, singing in the rain. I was so happy to see that, because I was like, why did I get an SDX? It gives me nothing but grief, I said to myself. I mean, it does a lot of the time compared to my, S my CM. But when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is a game changer. All right, but you know how, if you don't have this option, not that you can't do that, the offsets, you just have to use Canvas Workspace to do that. I'll tell you a little bit about my course in a little bit because I have to stay focused. I have to stay focused on this topic. So I just want to show you that we could have cut out 16, but we cut out one. And I want to show you what I do with these and um, how, you know, how to deal with these, what I'm, what I'm doing with them as far as stamping. I want to show you the stamping part. Then I want to show you the projects I make with them so that you go full circle so you know why we did all that work. And then I want to show you a little trick about this one here that came in the kit, okay? This one came in the kit. And now that I've done my tutorial, I was waiting to do, see, nope, I do need the light. Just making sure. Now that I did my tutorial, I can actually stamp on this one. I was afraid to use, I was afraid to stamp on my very last little wreath here. So we're gonna do three, we're gonna stamp three times. We're gonna stamp on this one, this one, and this one. And I could take this one off. So you may be, you may be wondering if you got this one, You might have got this, this um, wondering where to stamp it. And that was kind of fun to figure out so that you're not blocking all the little berries. So we can probably do that first. Let's just, just do that first. These, this one came like this. So these are little die cuts that came in the paper pumpkin kit. And what I did to, to do the berries is I took the little notch and I went like the opposite. So there's a notch there. I put the notch down. It looks like a little nose to me. That's what I look at it as. I said, it looked like a little face, see, with a little nose. So you see, I put that notch on that side. And then I took this one and I had to put this notch on the opposite side. So here's my stamp. See the little notch? I put the notch on the opposite side. And when I stamped, I didn't block my little berries. I had to tilt it a little like that. Okay, I'll go ahead and do it. I didn't block all my berries, but I mean, it worked pretty well where a lot of my berries still showed. Okay, so that's my little trick for you. The little nose goes that way. The little notch goes of your stamp goes the opposite way. Not straight across, just sort of, was it straight across? No, it was, it was a little bit of a turn. It's, it's like the opposite across, yeah. Okay, so let's do it. Anyway, I had to figure out these things and I'm trying to save my crafty friends from all, any frustration I had to go through. Well, it wasn't really frustration, it's more like experimentation. Okay, so that's what I did with my wreath. Pretty cool, right? You can still see all the berries. So that's what made me want to get more of these. 
and do more with these. And so I did a little bit of um, soft sea foam on top of that one too. But of course, you if you're ever gonna do two-step stamping, you always wanna put your dark colors down first. Like, so we've already done our dark one. We wanna do our, we wanna do our dark colors first. Okay, so this one, I mean, this one really doesn't matter because I could show you how to fix the, so I was sort of doing the same thing when I did my first little stamp, but then I realized very quickly that I didn't have all the berries on it and the stuff that they had, so I just had to make my own little pattern anyway. See, pretty cool. So what I did is I did like four step stamping. So this, that was one, and then I went like, turned it a little, and it doesn't really matter, and I did it again. This is still with the Just Jade, and that started and looked pretty cool, right? And then this one I did, I don't think I did it a second time. Maybe sometimes I did. Okay. So that's that, and it's already looking pretty cool. But now it's gonna look better when I put my soft sea foam on it. And you should always clean your stamps between, even though you did get rid of the darker color and it doesn't look like anything. I'm using my soft, my stampin' scrub. There's a wet side and I already put some wet stuff on it. And there's a dry side, so I'm just gonna clean my stamp real quick. Okay, hopefully that got that off. And if not, we'll test it. Yeah, it got it, it's, it's good. There's no big blotches of just jade on there. So what I'd like to do is for some, some, what we call it, texture, I guess, is just, I like to do a couple colors. So I just turned it sort of like that. Okay, and I did it again. Soft sea foam, so I did, this is, and I didn't do it first before I did the direct cut. Remember, I didn't do it first because I didn't want the scan and cut to recognize it, right? I didn't want to have soft sea foam sticking out and let the scan and cut recognize it. I wanted to make sure that the dark part was, was recognized by the scan and cut. Okay, so we'll show you what we're gonna do with that. Okay, and, okay, I'm doing a couple of these on here and I'm gonna show you how to fix any little white parts sticking out if you still have white parts, but I think I'm doing pretty good. Okay, whatever, just doesn't matter. Just t t turn it a little. Okay, so I'm happy with all these wreaths. This is the one that came with it. That's the one we did. Now I wanna show you, put the little berries on there. And whenever you use, whenever you use um, this, these stamps and you use cherry cobbler, you are gonna definitely stain your stamps with cherry cobbler which is fine, no big deal. I even, stained, I even stained my stamping block. I have stamp cleaner, I can get that off later. All right, so you stamp a couple berries, make sure, okay. So I just went around five times. If you wanna stamp off, if you think the berries are too dark, the holly berries, then that's fine. You can just stamp off and stamp once, stamp again somewhere else. And when I put my sentiments on there, sometimes it blocked my berries, so I ended up adding some extra berries. All right, so that's good. Now, this is the trick. Oh, we leave that open. Joy to the world. I had to cut my stamp apart, so I just wanted to show you that. My Paper Pumpkin subscribers, do not be afraid to cut your stamps apart. Joy to the world. There's to the world. Just cut it apart. If you cut it apart to the world and you put it like this, there's a little part that sticks up. Let's see, like that. See how this wreath sticks up a little bit? There's a little notch. I mean, that's just where I've been stamping it. It doesn't really matter though. It ended up fitting everywhere I went. Okay, let's put that on the, let's put that on there, on the sponge, okay? So, joy to the world. I went like that. There's a little part that goes up. How fun is that? Okay, so that's why I did those. I'm still not sure what I'm gonna do with these little pieces, but I did save my little pieces. And there you have it. So I wanna tell you a couple more things. I wanna tell you a couple more things about these stamps. Let's see if I don't have any. Okay, so if you're going to use, there we go. This is what I wanted to say. If you're going to use a stamp like this, I need to tell you a little trick while I'm here, only because I don't know when I'll get back to this paper pumpkin set. I'm using it now, but I probably will be doing different kinds of tutorials in the future, so. Okay, I'm gonna stamp that to show you something. 
and I should have stamped an extra one of these to show you something but we'll just we'll just clean it real quick this time I'm using my black and I don't want any of my color in it so I might use the stampin scrub between colors but when it comes to getting all the color off I do use a little baby wipe while I'm doing a tutorial because I don't want to I don't want to have any green mixing in with my black Okay, these things I need to explain, if whether no matter if you're using scan to cut data or direct cut, what you need to do with images like this is if you're ever using scan to cut data with images like this and you don't have like where we put this piece on a nice black piece of paper, we had great contrast, I put this there and I had great contrast, okay, I put it on a black piece of paper. You might not, so you know, you, you just want to just do this one, then you're going to have to have some great contrast and that's why I use black. Okay, and not only black for when you're using scan to cut data, you're going to get better results if you want the inside not if you want the inside to look sort of like this. Okay, you can do a little tracer tracer thing. This would work. You can kind of trace the little edges and make some kind of cool sort of shape for the inside like that. I mean, you could do that, or okay, and or I mean, or you could just go like this with your pencil. Okay, I'm just giving you options. Okay, wherever you put the line is where it's going to scan in. Maybe something like that. Because if not, it made a really, really weird shape. If I didn't put like a little bit of a smaller shape, it made such a strange shape with like a lot of stuff leaning to one side. And out here, it also made a strange shape when I did scan to cut data. So in, or in order to get rid of that strange shape, I had to sort of make blobs. I had to connect these lines. Otherwise, you end up with very strange things happening with skin, with the direct cut. Okay, it was, it was, if you want it to be sort of like a wreath, if you want this to come out sort of like this, then you, you need to sort of go around the edges a little bit. Okay, so that's right. And then this one, you can either connect it with a pencil. See how this is open? This flower? You can connect it with a pencil. Or, you can use my color trick. I'm going to show you my color trick, although I don't recommend coloring the whole thing. I have a color trick when you only have a little tiny bit to connect. And that is to just take a dark color, like, like we'll make that just jade, and we can just sort of do that. Because we know we're going to be coloring it anyway. So just jade. It's okay to color the tips in just jade. See? Because I know I'm going to be coloring this flower anyway. But usually, there's three reasons I don't color before. And this one's going to be cherry cobbler. Let's see. I was using light cherry cobbler actually. So I can connect that line with the cherry cobbler only because that'll save me from having to erase my pencil mark later. There's only a couple little places. Because if you use a pencil to fill in the gaps, you have to erase it later. But if you know you're gonna be coloring it later, then just go ahead and fill in the little, the, the marker right away and you don't have to worry about that. Now why am I teaching you this trick? It's, it's because usually I don't actually, I don't actually color before I cut for several reasons and one of them you saw in this tutorial that the, the whole paper could slip you you could spend all this time cutting I mean coloring coloring not cutting and then look what happens you go to cut it boom this happened to me I didn't plan that my paper slipped can you imagine if I had spent all this time coloring this beautiful flower not just this flower but a whole page of flowers and I walk away as it's cutting I come back and they're all cut in the wrong spot I would cry. I just spent all that time coloring. No, I wouldn't cry. I, it takes a lot more to make me cry, but I do cry. All right, that's, I also want to show you how to erase this. So anyway, that is why I would use a little bit of color. The other reason I don't color before I cut is because if I color before I cut, then it's going to recognize whatever, When if I colored outside the lines, that's what gets recognized, okay? the actually extra parts I colored gets recognized and you get little bumps around your image instead of cutting along the black line, it's gonna cut along your mistakes. And three, the third reason I don't color before I cut is because sometimes I don't know what colors I'm gonna be using yet. And if you have a bunch of flowers cut out, you can then use them for other things. You can cut them out later and then color them according to whatever project you're doing. In this case, I know my project. All right, so if you wanna use this little reef instead of the little shape, then just sort of do this little doobly do, sort of do that around it. You know, I'm going to go real thick because you, it, otherwise it's going to go too far deep into the wreath and look really funny. So wherever you put your little lines is what it's going to get recognized. 
So that's my that's my tricks. Those are all the tips and tricks for you. Now with this one, you might say, well, it doesn't really look as cute as this one. So, but it still saved me a lot of work, right? The inside looks fine. So what I do sometimes is I just went around the outside a little bit, just a little bit, if I wanted to. I mean, so that's just an option if you want it to go even further. But just do it loosely. I mean, don't do it like exact because you're trying to make a little wreath, a wreath shape. So you don't want to make it too, like, what is it called, straight, uh, too smooth. You don't want it to be smooth around the edges. So I would fixed a couple of mine, but I didn't really need to fix too many because I was doing all this like stamping. I did it like four times stamping. And by that time I had a lot of stuff around the outside, but look how cool those are. So now you are waiting to see my projects if you are still with me. And if you are still with me, it means that you are probably one of my crafty friends that really want to better yourselves and learn like really, really deep things about the scan and cut. Delve deep, because I like to delve deep. So one of the things I wanted to tell you about as I'm cleaning up here and I get my crafts to show you is, because I don't want to get ink on my crafts. See, that's why I'm using the baby wipe. I just launched, and this is why I disappeared for a little while to finish doing that course. I've been working on it for many months. <laughs> it's a very, very long, intense course with a lot of detail, and it is called Canvas Workspace A to Z. My Patreons, my Patreons, I mean, my channel supporters of my YouTube channel, Paper Chef, are the ones that asked for that topic. They said, please delve deep into Canvas Workspace. They challenged me, some of the things I had to figure out myself, and they challenged me. It's why it took so long, technically, to film with computers. It's a lot harder than filming like I'm doing now with the table and the machines and the crafts. There's a lot of technical challenges with doing that. So anyway, the course is called Canvas Workspace A to Z. It's almost eight hours. It's about seven hours and 45 minutes, probably eight hours by the time I add a couple of little tutorials on how to do a couple um, more summaries. It'll be eight hours of video footage. The course never expires, but I do have coupons that expire and they're only $9.99 right now, probably for a couple more days by the time I publish this video. So I hope you'll see me in that course. It's all hosted on Udemy. So if you have any trouble, Udemy helps you with tech support payment processing everything I can concentrate on teaching and they handle all the logistics for me okay so I hope you will check out that course again linked in the description and I don't know if I have anything handy I could show you no I did have samples from that course but they are not quite they're not anywhere near me where I can show you but I did do a video on YouTube very recently and it was the, the video was about the course overview all right, da, da, da. now I'm gonna show you what I made from this paper pumpkin kit. Now I did not separate these. I just got done taking photographs, which if you're a crafter, you know that it takes like almost as long to take photographs and document your crafts and figure out which materials you used as it does to actually make the crafts. So what I'm gonna show you is everything I made from this paper pumpkin kit because I, don't, I didn't have time to separate what I used the scan and cut for and what I didn't use the scan and cut for. Once again, this is what I started with, these card bases, and this is what I ended with. Okay, so these tags, I used the tag buffet kit and I just created a bunch of tags from the kit. And I took some parts from my kit. Why are there different languages? Isn't that fun? It's, they have French and German because this kit is going global. I'm gonna open this box last. I created cracker boxes using this kit and, some, and this punch. I just showed 33 projects you can make with the paper pumpkin kit. And in that video, I showed how to take this punch and how to make cracker boxes. But my crafty friends that have a scan and cut, if you don't want to use punches, you can use, you can go to a template maker site and do it that way. Also in my last tutorial on the paper pumpkin, and here's one I used to scan and cut for, I showed how to make these, what I call sour cream containers. And inside are these little, these little guys, cinnamon imperials. So now you're getting to see what I did with all these. This one's not even this kit or this stamp set. So let me pull that and put that up to the side. But it is the same kind of paper. Maybe that's why I have it there. Yeah, this is this is called, this one, pa this paper is Christmas, classic Christmas. Maybe that's why I have it out there. Let me move this one off to the side though so we don't confuse you. Oh, anyway, back to, the, back to the scan and cut. You saw how I used the wreaths. I put a little bit of Wink of Stella. That's a little bit of glitter on these wreaths that we just stamped. So that's, that's how, you, how I did it with the scan and cut, making the hole. So 
see? And I just added a little bit of glitter and that's how you get to this point. And you can decorate all your treats. Okay, that's how I made these. I made diaper folds. These are diaper folds. Again, Wink of Stella, scan and cut. Some stitch dies. Okay, here's the scan and cut. 0.4 outline distance. Okay, I'll show you what's inside this box in a minute, but let me just show you my pizza boxes. Here we go. This is what I was waiting for. Remember how earlier in this tutorial, which seems like forever ago, I did explain how to take this one and I said, hey, when you're using direct cut, I said, all you can do is just, only thing you could do is cut out your stamped image and you can make an outline distance. That's all you can do in direct cut. But look how cool that is. This was direct cut. Look how cool. You replace the paper with foil or some other color and look at that fun outline distance. That's a 0 0.08 outline distance. And look at that, it really pops when you put that extra layer on there. Okay, so this is another mini pizza box. I have tutorials on how to use your scan and cut to cut out precisely all the parts you need for your mini pizza boxes. Okay, here's another one. Scan and cut, help with the scan and cut. In fact, I, I cut everything with the scan and cut. I cut all these pieces out. And I did, I did scan and cut for the, every project here, almost every project here for some part of it. This one, I did scan and cut for those flowers I just told you about. And then I colored them with Stampin' Blends. I used a cherry cobbler, light cherry cobbler, and light real red, and blended them together with some, and then down here I used so saffron, and not so saffron, so, soft sea foam. <laughs> soft sea foam, not so saffron. And just jade for the leaves, and some dark cherry cobbler for those little berries. And then, da -da, look at this little guy. He's so cool. He is from Festive Post. It's another, it's another, um, here we go. Another stamp set by Stampin' Up. Scan and cut though, scan and cut, of course. Even though I have the postage stamp punch, which looks pretty cool too. You'll be seeing my swap soon that I swapped with my team. And that's, that's the, I did old olive for that guy. He's, he's in just jade. But when I did my team swap, I did, I did, I used the postage punch. But now that I'm, you know, I'm doing these treats, I use the scan and cut. Okay, so all made with that kit. And what I said, I was gonna open one of these boxes. Oh, here, I wanted to open that box next to this box because they both have something in it that you will like. All right, so this box, you decorate, again, you just use scan and cut, decorate all your pieces. This one's Tis the Season, designer series paper. A lot of the times I use classic Christmas designer series paper as well. Scan and cut for the wreath. Dun, dun, dun. This little flower came in the kit. Scan and cut. You can put a set of note cards in there. It would have fit many more. Look, it would. I only put three note cards and three envelopes. It would have probably fit six, or even more. But you can put nuggets in there too. See, and you can stamp the little envelopes. We sell note cards and envelopes. Okay. Scan and cut. Scan and cut. Layered. This is festive post. That same. The little Merry Christmas. I needed something really small. Merry Christmas and tis the season. Enjoy the season. Fit inside the wreath. There's that classic Christmas 0 0.08 outline distance again that we just learned about in direct cut. Direct cut outline distance. Okay, and then this little card. You can cut all your pieces with the scan and cut. These note cards I just made with Whisper White cardstock, and they just all open from the top. I can give them as gifts. I can give little notes to customers or something, and you have your little note card set. This is, that's a mini pizza box. This is a three and one eighths inch acetate card box. Very hard to find on our website, even when you search for it. But just look up packaging, and it's in the packaging section of this of my website. There's my website, by the way. Buried under there if you wanna get any of these products that I'm showing you. Or if you wanna get Paper Pumpkin prepaid subscriptions, you go there. Paper pumpkin subscriptions, I'll put that link in the in the um, description of this video. So there's another one, layered, layered wreath. By the way, the 26th of October, we are gonna be able to get refills for this kit. So I am jumping on that because it's while supplies last. I guess they're the same note cards as before, but they fit in a clear box. You've seen me put liners for this box on this channel. I've done that. All right, I'm making sure I'm staying under an hour, so let's Let's step it up. I have 11 cards to show you in this box. I'm going to show you this box last. 
but I will show you I did it there's another random diaper fold all right here are my cards I think I have 11 cards and a bookmark and then this okay so this is one of the cards tis the season designer series paper this is all from the paper pumpkin kit the stamps joy to the world celebration labels dot celebration labels dies scan and cut Christmas gleaming punch pack that's what that is these are celebration labels dies okay peace to you and yours this is the brick and mortar 3d embossing folder with a little bit of classic Christmas behind there soft seafoam card base okay and I, I guess I'll show how to color these in one of my ink it up tutorials I'll show how to color some of the things from this stamp set okay or I'll try I mean I'm not gonna promise I have to try this is celebration labels dies again this one is just without any scan and cut or anything I just stamped right onto a piece of whisper white cardstock just cut you just did the little wreaths these are just the stamps you just saw me use that's all this is this is simple stamping meaning there's nothing on it just a layer of whisper white and a layer of designer series paper a couple stickers these are the cards I decorated directly I used some extra little dies from flourishing forever flourishing it's called dies this one is tasteful labels dies and there's the scan and cut for that little flower I think that flower needs some Wink Costello to make it little, have a little shimmer to it. This paper, as you can see, is in other languages, and it's, so it has like English, French, and German, which is really nice, and you saw, you saw that paper being used for these treats here. Okay, celebration labels die. I just took, to get that paper, I just cut apart my envelopes as well, I did. Another celebration labels dies. And tasteful labels dies. Did stamping in so saffron and just jade. Okay, another one. This is from Festive Post Scan and Cut Scan and Cut Wreath and Forever Flourishing dies. This is the little banner punch. And even though I have a scan and cut, and I showed recently on my tutorial how to make your own banners, so you can watch that tutorial on my channel. I still love my banners pick a punch because it helps me use up all my scraps and just put little banner ends whenever I want to. So I do use a lot of punches and I use a lot of dies. In fact, dies this small do a better job it, and your foil, it does a better job with the die machine. When I say dies, metal dies, this does than the scan and cut would. Whereas cutting stamped images forever, I love using my machine better than the die. But when it comes to little flourishes, I like using metal, metal dies better. Sometimes I'll compare dies to the machine, maybe. Okay, this is another card. Again, just using a piece of the envelope. And there's one of the wreaths that came in the kit. And another one. And for this one, I, the sponging technique I used was I took some of this soft seafoam ink and I sponged the little sweater pieces that came. These little sweater pieces came in the kit. They were already pre-embossed for us. Paper pumpkin kits have so much in them that you can do so many fun things with. But I didn't want to put white on white. So I took the piece and I sponged colored it with soft sea foam to make that happen. All right, so that's the last of the cards. I hope I showed you all 11 of my cards. And now for my little box. Dun, dun, dun. Happy Christmas, I just punched it out from the sentiment. The sentiment that was inside the card, see? Happy Christmas, that's where I got happy Christmas. And the little tag too. I was gonna show you the little tag as well. Happy Christmas. There we go. <laughs> nuggets, nuggets. So this is Christmas time is here, designer series paper. Flowers for every season, designer series paper. That's the same as that one. Flowers for every season. So these two are flowers for every season. These two are Christmas time is here, and these two are classic Christmas. So you can, you can get a lot of colors that look well together, that look, go well together, and put them in. And that's just the front of the card with a little wreath wrapped, wreath wrapped around it. And that's the back of the card. That's just the back of the card, meaning I made that out of this card. Okay. So my coupons for my courses I will be posting in the description. If you want to check out Scan and Cut A to Z, I have lots of other courses, including SDX course, which is all about the settings of the machine itself, where my Scan and Cut A to Z is about the software. It's about the software. 
and it'll work with any machine. And then I also have two courses on the CM350 that's called Scan and Cut Basics, Scan and Cut Advanced. And then I have a, a card making with the Scan and Cut, card making classes for SDX125 or CM350, or pretty much any machine. And then I have working with fonts. That's half software based and half half based on how to cut things out with the, ma the materials on your machine. And that is SDX and 125 based. Um, most of them are $9.99, sometimes $11.99. $11 Please use my links and don't search for them and go to Udemy because then it, I don't get credit for even sending you there. They are my courses after all. And if I send someone there with my link, I actually get paid for the course more then if I would, if I use just search for it on your own, um, they actually consider it state that they found you on Udemy yourself. It's kind of hard to explain, but please use my links. Even if my coupons are expired, please use my links. By the time I show this, they should not be expired. They should be good for a couple more days. I do appreciate all the support that you have given me on this channel and helping me grow to the point I've grown. And I really, really, really appreciate my patrons, my patrons from Patreon, Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, okay, P, that's an A, R-E-O-N, Patreon is the place where my supporters get my courses for free because they support me on an ongoing basis and they get coupons for my courses, tutorials from me, and extra, extra perks, like different levels, different levels of support, so they, they all got free coupons and so I thank you for supporting me and coming up with the name of the course that I just created. And now I'm taking a break from that for a little while, doing more tutorials on YouTube for a little while, and then I'll get back to asking you what the next course should be as well. <laughs> all right, well, that's all for now. This is The Papered Chef. Thank you for joining me today. Bye.